Okay, it's Monday the 8th of November 2021. Uh, today is day one of the solar installation and the uh, installers have just pulled up outside. Uh, so first and foremost, let's uh, look at the disclaimer. I'm not an expert in anything. This video is just to share how my project is going along and all the views that I'm sharing are my own. I've not been paid by any of the uh, brands that we're going to be talking about to feature them in this video. Um, if you happen to be interested in getting solar for yourself, make sure you seek qualified advice and do not uh, base any of your decisions on anything uh, that I have said in this video, as it may not be 100% accurate. So three installers have arrived at our house. Two of them are roofers and will be working to install the panels on the roof. And the third chap is an electrician who will be doing all the wiring and all the internal work. Uh, so the first thing they did is started with the roof on the front because they said it's a little bit more difficult with that ridge in the way. Uh, so they wanted to focus on that. Uh, so what they did is they got up there, they removed a few roof tiles uh, and that allows them to install a bracket to one of the joists that are underneath there. And these um, rails that you see there on the roof at the moment are then fitted to that bracket. And then the solar panels are then fitted to the rail. So um, on the right-hand portion of the video, there's a number of rails going up. I think it's two rails per per kind of row of panels. Uh, so that means that there should there's four rows of four rows of panels on the right hand side so there should be eight rails and on the left hand side there's two rows of panels uh, so and so there's four rails for each of those if we take a quick peek at some of the um the kit so here's a quick photograph of the back of the van where you can see all of the 19 panels that are going on to our house uh, stacked up nice and neat uh, honestly speaking they managed to fit the entire uh collection of equipment needed for our installation into this one van. Everything was there, all the tools, all the parts, with ample room to spare. So I was quite surprised how uh, tightly it all packs together. Here is the, the brains of the operation, really. This is the Enphase IQ7 Plus microinverter. So we have 19 of these. One of them is going to be fitted behind every single panel. And as I mentioned in one of the earlier videos, what happens is that the DC current generated by the solar panel is brought into this device. This device then converts it into AC current, and then that AC current is fed out of this device and then back to um, back to the grid, basically, or back to our, our distribution board, and then it's consumed in the house or put to the battery or put to the grid or whatever, whatever the system then decides. But um, this little thing is an inverter. It's... It's about the size of an A4 page, maybe a little bit smaller than that. It's quite a heavy thing. It probably weighs about three kilos, I would say, three to four kilos. It's Here um, is just a photograph of a stack of them with all of their connectors uh, on there, piled up, ready to be fitted uh, in the house. And this is not the best of photos, but this, this is all the cabling that will connect uh, to those microinverters and connect all the panels uh, together in, in kind of a series in a chain. So I got myself up the scaffolding and took a slightly closer look at everything that was going on. So here's a photograph of the front of the house. This is the main portion of the roof where eight panels will go. The rails have been fitted. Uh, you can see if you look very closely that there are little brackets with uh, lead flashing, which have already been fitted first. And now the installers are putting the microinverters in place and connecting them all together. So the microinverters come with a bracket and that bracket is bolted to the rails. And then you've got one set of cabling which connects from one microinverter to the next one and connects them all up in series. And you've got another one which is going to be connecting uh, to the actual panel. So it takes the power generated from the panel, puts it into the microinverter, and then pushes that out to the next microinverter. Uh, somewhere up here, the cable disappears under the tiles and into the house, and that's where it will be connected to all the gadgetry which I'll show you in a little bit. Here's another angle of, um, of the roof. So looking straight ahead is the smaller portion of the roof where just two panels will be fitted. If you look very closely on the horizon in the distance, you can see the arch of Wembley Stadium. It's just um, touching one of the scaffolding poles. 
And finally, here's the main portion of the front roof, just uh, with me standing on the other side. Um, so all the rails are there, the microinverters are fitted, the cables are all connected up. So next thing to go on here is literally put the panels in place. So I got back down on the ground to let the installers carry on. And as you can see, the first few panels uh, are in place. It was pretty difficult to get a good angle from the ground to, um, to take a good photograph. There's a couple of trees in the way and the, the boarding on the scaffolding kind of gets in the way. Um, so it's not the best picture, but as you can see, basically they just place the panels onto those rails, get the positioning right, and then bolt them down using a few brackets that they've got. Here's the, here's the roof again, just from a slightly different angle. You can't see much. Uh, all the panels that they're about to fit are stacked up there, ready to go, and they've got the first few on there. Again, another angle, so the fitters have got all of the panels onto the front roof. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, I know the scaffolding's in the way. I will get up there and take a better quality picture uh, when I can, but that's what it looks like with all the panels fitted on the roof. Here's another angle of the same thing and another angle of the same thing again. So here's a view of our internal loft space. Uh, that brick wall that you see there is the canvas that the electrician's got to fit all of the stuff that needs to go here. And he's already brought upstairs the huge Give Energy 8.2 kilowatt battery. It's Monday the 8th of November in the afternoon. The fitters have just gone home for the day. And this is what the electrician has uh, done so far. So starting on the very top, you have the Give Energy AC inverter, which takes the power, uh, AC current power and converts it to DC to store in the battery. The battery is the big box on the bottom and all the stuff in the middle is the wiring and the isolators and whatnot. So starting on the far right hand side, the big rotary dial thing is the isolator for the PV panels. Then the thing, the white box in the middle, which is that thing over there, is the generation meter. So it just measures how much power the solar panels are producing. The next thing there is another isolator. I think it's for the battery. And then we have a fuse box with, with a trip switch. And finally, we have the Enphase Envoy, which is the communications hub for all of the uh, microinverters on the roof. So nothing is working yet, although the battery, you might see some lights on it. That's because the battery has stored power. Um, Sorry, tomorrow when the guys arrive, they will be commissioning this whole system and showing me how to use it. At the moment, nothing is switched on and it's not actually connected up uh, downstairs in our fuse cupboard. So this is just wiring standalone. They have already pulled through the wires from the roof from the solar panels for the array on the front of the house. So to the left, you can see a couple of wires tacked to the rafters and that goes through the roof uh, to the external where the wires are coming in from. Uh, tomorrow the roofers will be working on the other side of the house, the rear of the house, to get all the panels on up there. And the electrician is going to be working to wire this whole thing up, doing some external work and connecting up downstairs in the fuse box. So all in all, the roofers worked pretty fast. They managed to get all of the panels fitted onto the front roof uh, during the course of this first day. Uh, they also made a start with installing the rails on the rear roof, um, but they, they actually ran out of rails, so they came back to the front roof to install a bird mesh. So a bird mesh is something I haven't mentioned before, but basically it's, it's a metal wire mesh uh, which is fitted around the side of all these panels, and what it does is blocks off the small gap that is under the panel and prevents any birds from going under there and nesting, because apparently um, you know they cause cause havoc and they'll damage all the, the gadgetry. So this mesh basically goes all the way around all of the panels and uh, it doesn't leave them any, any gaps to be able to creep under there. Um, close up, it doesn't look very attractive, but when I've looked at it from the ground, you can barely notice that it's there. But um, having spoken to quite a few people, including the roof over removed the chimney, they strongly recommend you get the bird mesh. It should be just something that they, they install as default without asking you a question. Um, if you choose not to get it, it's pretty much guaranteed that um, birds will find their way under there and you'll be calling someone back after a period of time 
uh, when your system's stopped working for some reason or they've caused some damage to your roof and you know trying to get it all rectified it will be a much bigger headache at that point because you may have to replace some equipment maybe have to remove some panels of course the scaffolding will be long gone so how do the roofers get up there to try and repair all this uh, so it can become a costly thing the the bird mesh for our installation i think the guy added on about two or three hundred pounds so it's it's a small cost in the grand scheme of things one thing i will say is that because our panels are black when in my view it looks quite smart the bird mesh is you know kind of silvery metal kind of color uh, in hindsight i have seen that some other installations use a black colored bird mesh um, so a learning uh, for me which is too late now but if uh, if i was going to give you one piece of advice i would suggest trying to get black bird mesh rather than this metal colored one as i think it will look a lot more uh, discreet the, the the nice glass kind of finished panels look really smart on the roof but the the bird mesh kind of takes away from it um, particularly if it's a silver color so if you can get the black one then it will look uh, a bit smarter all around the other thing is despite me asking the um the salesman that i wanted to kind of low profile railing so the panels sit as close as possible to the roof tiles um the railings that they happen to have chosen do sit um I don't know, four inches. The panels do end up sitting about four inches above the roof tiles. Uh, maybe this is how it is. They certainly found when they put the panels on our roof that our roof actually wasn't straight. Uh, when they fitted all the panels straight, they were all kind of wonky and they had to go back and make some adjustments to all the brackets and how tightly they'd screw down all the panels to get it looking like it's flush like you can see in some of the pictures. So that's um, that's kind of a real life situation that despite your roof looking perfectly straight from the ground, when the installers go up there and start putting completely straight rails on there, you're going to discover that the roof is not quite straight or the roof isn't um, exactly the same shape you thought. Uh, certainly when they went up there to kind of triple check the measurements before they started, they found that that section of roof where the eight panels have gone was a lot tighter than the surveyor had ended up measuring. Um, they just about managed to kind of get it all on there um, but it was an extremely tight situation. On the little roof, by my calculations, we could have fitted four panels. But when the installer went up there, he said there was only room for two. Now, if you measure from the kind of centre line between our house and the neighbour's property, um, all the way along to where you hit the ridge, uh, you know, adjusting for the fact that it's a rectangle, you're trying to fit in a triangular space, my calculations tell me you could have just about fitted two panels um, on the bottom row with about 10 centimeters to spare. However, the roofers say that they can't fit panels flush with the bottom of your roof tiles. They have to start um, about 20 centimeters to 30 centimeters up from the bottom, which is roughly kind of the height of two to three roof tiles. Um, I think this is just because as rainwater runs off, it won't flow over the top of your uh, flow down your panels and completely miss your gutter. I think this is to force the rainwater to hit the roof tiles and then land in your gutter. Um, otherwise you'll find that it's just kind of trickling water on the ground below. So I mean that's a valid reason as much of it as much as I find it's wasting roof space, it appears to be a valid reason. On the kind of horizontal going left to right, they apparently have to leave a gap between the edge of your kind of roof space and your neighbours. Um, given that we have a semi-detached house, I don't really see why they could have gone flush up against the centre line, in my view. Um, if I mean, the neighbour's just done his roof, so he's not planning to do anything on there anytime soon. But at least that allows us to get a bit of extra space. But again, I don't know if it's the installers or I don't know if there's some sort of regulation to say you can't go uh, close up to the centre line. So they had to leave um, a, a, a gap. Now, in this case, we couldn't fit more tiles when you allow for that. So they centred the tiles on our roof. Um, but otherwise they would have left again a 20 to 30 centimetre gap. On the vertical, because of the way they laid it out, um, they've only put two panels. If they had started closer to the bottom without leaving that space between the, the gutter and the, and the bottom of the first tile, then you could have just about fitted a third panel on top. So it's really unfortunate that, um, I don't know what these rules are, but it's just meant that we're a few centimetres too short to get the extra panels on the roof, which I really, really would have liked. Um, and it's unfortunate that the shape of our roof is such that uh, we've lost a lot of valuable space 
where we could have otherwise had panels. Uh, like I said in the earlier video, I wish the panel manufacturers would make half size panels in the same kind of brand and design or triangular shaped panels that would be much more suitable for this market and the kind of houses that you tend to find in the UK. And we could have got you know a lot more utilization out of this, this space and made the most of it. But anyway, never mind. So day one so far has gone well. They've they've accomplished quite a lot. Um, so this is the work of the of the two roofers. They've basically got all the rails fitted. Um, they've got the microinverters fitted underneath and they've got the panels um, installed on top. Uh, they've even got the bird mesh around the front. So basically the front is completely done uh, unless they discover some sort of problem when the electrician uh, you know, kind of fires up the whole system. For tomorrow, when they come back tomorrow, they're going to be working on the, on the rear roof to do the same thing. But the rear is a lot more straightforward because it's just one straight canvas rather than all these uh, fiddly bits that they have to try and figure out. Okay, that's it for day one. Tune in to the next video to see what happens next.